In this video, I'm going to explain how to control a Neo LED strip from a, just a PIC microcontroller. Uh, I've got a 20 megahertz crystal there, and I'll explain why I need a 20 megahertz crystal when we look at the data sheet. So in the data sheet, if I skip over the first bit of stuff, get to the uh, how to use it. So the first thing to note is um, it will take these LEDs will take 3.5 volts to 5. 3 volts so pretty good for lithium-ion battery use and this is the important stuff so how to control it so you can send a binary zero by sh sending a short high signal and then a long long low signal or send binary one by sending a long high signal and a short low signal uh, but this is important stuff so for a low signal you have to send a high pulse of 0.4 microseconds. So if I look at a calculator, uh, so internally um, this microcontroller has a clock of 4 megahertz, uh, and the instruction cycles are that divided by 4. So 1 megahertz instruction clock cycle. So if I put 1, if I invert that by saying 1 over, that says how many seconds there are per clock cycle per instruction um, so this is milli and that's uh, micro um, so one microsecond and the high signal needed 0.4 microseconds so it's not possible with the with the, with the internal 4 megahertz clock um, to produce a signal fast enough to actually drive th this LED uh, so in order to do that I use an external clock um, so what I use is if I the most it can the, the fastest clock this uh, microcontroller can use is 20 megahertz. Now I could use probably a 10 megahertz, but as the LED strip is uh, quite power consumption hungry, uh, might as well use the 20 megahertz clock. So 20 like that. So for a 20 megahertz clock, you divide by four for get, to get the instruction cycle clock. So that's Five megahertz instruct per, uh, ins instruction cycle clock. So invert that to say how much time per instruction, and we get milliseconds, microseconds. So 0.2 microseconds. So actually, to get 0.4, uh, if I issue two two clock cycle instructions, single clock cycle instructions, I'll get that 0.4 microsecond exactly. Um, so I, I so I drive this um, LED strip using. Um, a 20 megahertz clock because it gives me that, uh, that ability to actually provide two clock cycles, uh, two uh, for the two instructions, which will give me two clock cycles to produce 0.4 microseconds, uh, and for for low signal, uh, four clock cycles, um, so four instructions to produce that precisely. The only other instruction uh, that you can uh, issue the LED strip is this reset. Instruction which is saying that uh, so you say I've got I've got eight LEDs in a series uh, So after I've addressed say four LEDs if I want to start addressing that first LED again I'd have to just leave a low signal for anything above 50 microseconds I actually found in my programming for the, for the LEDs I've got I actually need to leave 100 microseconds for some reason I'm not quite sure why that is if I've got a slightly different issue of NeoPixels or or something like that um, but as and I always found that these uh, low signals here for the binary zeros and ones, it actually doesn't matter how long they are, as long as they're less than the reset signal. Uh, all that's important is how long the high signal is, and then the low can be left, uh, so you can go on with other other doing other programming stuff, uh, as long as the high signal is exactly the timings which are given up here. So if I scroll down a bit further, so. This is the way that the pixels are physically linked together. They just have three pins, voltage in, ground, and data in, and data out. Uh, data in on one side, the data out on the other side. Uh, and you just uh, and they come in a strip with all, all the data in connected to data outs anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. You just have to provide the voltage, ground, and the data in. And this is how they're addressed. So... In series, the first LED you send out um, 
data. Uh, then the second LED you send out data straight after, the third LED you send out data straight after. Uh, and then you leave a 50 microsecond or 100 microsecond in my case gap, uh, low low signal, and that resets the address point to the first LED again, so you, then you can send out uh, different data, first LED, second LED, and third LED. And this is as long as, as, long as you want, so you can do the fourth LED, fifth LED, and then resets uh, signal to go back to the address of the first LED again. Oh, and the other, the only other thing that's worth noting is normally when you talk about color signals in computing, you talk RGB, red, green, and blue. Uh, but these NeoPixels, they're addressed green, red, and then blue. Uh, and it's uh, most significant bit goes out first and least significant bit last. So this is the source code. I'll put the source code in GitHub, uh, but in this video I'll just briefly go through the important parts of the source code. Um, so this is where I send out a high signal. Um, so I set the uh, GPO high for four, uh, four instruction cycles. Now I could have put NOP instruction cycles on these three uh, because the, the GPO is already set high uh, at that one. Uh, but the reason I, I issued three GPO instructions is it makes it more obvious to me when I'm reading the code that I'm specifically setting this high for instruction cycles for timing purposes uh, and then set it low again and then for the send out a low uh, bit to the LED strip I set the GPO high for two instruction cycles so that's 0.4 of a, um, of a microsecond uh, and then set the output bit low um, so I've broken it down into functional um, parts of, of code for driving the strip. So this one sends out a, a, a red, green, blue, or actually it's GRB, green, red, blue, set of data. So it's three bytes of data. Green is eight, eight bits, red is eight bits, and blue is eight bits. Uh, and so that sends it out to the, the uh, LED strip. Uh, so that's what this is doing. And so it'll call the... Um, set bit low and set bit high depending on what, what it needs to do. So that's so this is called once for every LED you want to light up. Uh, this is the reset um, function. So this is the one which delays it. In, in my code, 100 um, microseconds. Uh, it, it, in the data sheet, it reckons 50 microseconds, but uh, the, it'll work. The, the 100 microseconds will work for both cases, so it's okay. Um, and then this is uh, actually I'm refreshing the whole LED array. So I've got an LED size uh, array size there. So that's eight I set that to because I've got eight LEDs in my array. And also disable the interrupts because you have, it needs to be disabled for the for when you get down to this bit where timing is critical. If an interrupt occurred in here, uh, then it would it, it would make this uh, high value invalid uh, and even more critical for the low value because it needs to be a much shorter value if an interrupt occurred in there then it would mess that up so you need to disable interrupts during this whole refresh period so this is what refreshes the whole array of LEDs uh, and then this is like just a demo function which I've got which uh, when you saw the LEDs at the start of the video uh, they were pulsing well they were like fading in and out where the green and blue values and that's all that this function does is it it just creates like a demonstration of all the LEDs uh, fading in in and out kind of uh, kind of in a random kind of way this is my main leap of the application it just waits until it's flagged to update so I can uh, can control how how fast it updates the LEDs uh, so it will do set up a new so uh, set of uh, random values for colors in, in here it will like increment or decrement the colors uh, and then it will send that out to the LED strip. This is just GPO initialization, this is just sorry the microcontroller initialization code which you need at the start of any program. Uh, these are the these are the interrupts which I have so in timer zero I use it to generate like a random number kind of value which I can use to fade in and out the LEDs and also timer zero uh, sets the, the uh, update speed for the LEDs as well so it, it sets the flag to say okay update the update the LEDs now 
and then timer one I use uh, and I do, I do a similar kind of thing so I use it as a, a seed for randomizing like the value which I use to fade in and out um, but I also um, do another thing in here which is oh yeah I I actually update the array of um, that I'm gonna be fading and out um, so if I if I show you my the actual um, values which is just up here so this is the entry uh, for reset entry in Trump vector um, but this is the array. this is these are the values which I have in, in RAM so I have some values for just for doing stuff with the Neo stuff this is system uh, values for uh, storing values during interrupts and things like that um, but this is the array of fade values so for every LED I have a byte which says fade in or fade out for each of the colors and then the LED data itself so I've got an array keeping track of what the green red and blue are values for the each of the LEDs each of the eight LEDs so the, it remembers the LED values and it remembers how, whether they're fading in or fading out and then the fading in and fade, fading out in, in that interrupt um, gets updated with whether or not it should um, each bit should uh, each color should fade in or out for each of the LEDs and that's basically I've just got some definitions up here so if you have more LEDs in your array then you could set that to 16, 32 however many LEDs you've got in, in the array uh, and yeah just some standard stuff um, so I, I run it on a PIC 12F629 now all the 8-bit PICs should have the same instruction sets in them so uh, you might need to change if you just run it on a different PIC you might need to change some of the um, registers because uh, some of the registers are in different banks and things like that um, and also uh, the way that the oscillator is set up so it's an external oscillator and it needs to be 20 megahertz uh, that's what this program assumes, uh, but you should be able to connect a 20, 20 megahertz uh, oscillator to most 8-bit PIC microcontrollers.